Donald Trump forms his cabinet. His cabinet. In depth coverage on KSL News Radio. President elect Donald Trump has made it official he wants to nominate ExxonMobil CEO Rex Tillerson for Secretary of State. Mitt Romney was in consideration for that job and reportedly. So was former Governor John Huntsman Jr. Governor Huntsman joins us now live in studio to talk about President-elect Trump's cabinet and much more here on Utah's Mornings. Good morning to you, Governor. Boy, what a a pleasure to be here. (laughs) This studio I love, and I love it because I used to sit here uh, on the Doug Wright Show, and we had this program called Let Me Ask the Governor. And I used to to refer to it as Let Me Harass the Governor, (laughs) because it also would come and sometimes be highly personal, and (laughs) we saw you here or there. But I loved it because it was such an intimate conversation with the people of the state, and it's such a pleasure to be back. Thank you for having me. Did you talk with Donald Trump about the Secretary of State job? Well, not that specifically. We we had a conversation uh, er, earlier. and uh, How did and, that conversation go? Well, it, it was more a congratulatory conversation, and uh, uh, happy to be of help uh, where we can. Uh, and it, so kind of left at that. We've had uh, a couple of conversations during the campaign. We, we actually had Donald Trump during uh, the campaign late last year. At, a, at an event in New Hampshire for a group that I co-chair, along with se- uh, former Senator Joe Lieberman, where we packed a ballroom of Republicans, Democrats, and independents, and we had all the then-candidates uh, come on stage to tell us n- not about uh, politics, but about problem-solving. So how are you going to solve the big issues of the day? Dispense with your political, uh, your typical political talk, and let's get right down to tax reform, uh, balancing budgets, energy self-sufficiency, how are you going to handle the uh, uh, correcting the entitlement to imbalances? And he was there and actually did pretty well. And, uh, and uh, so that was kind of our first encounter uh, last year. So I, you know, I think that he is in, in an interesting way putting together uh, an unprecedented cabinet. So what do you make of Rex Tillerson? Well, uh, I think he's uh, uh, unlike any nominee we've had for Secretary of State, where most have come from diplomacy, academia, uh, uh, the intelligence community. And here we have somebody stepping right out of ExxonMobil. Uh, he's, he's only been in one company since 1975, which is interesting. And you kind of have to harken back to somebody else who I've known over the years, a guy named George Schultz, who was uh, Ronald Reagan's secretary of state. He took uh, Al Haig's place in, in 1982. He had been president of a company called Bechtel, which is a large construction firm. And, uh, and uh, there was a lot of criticism at the time you all were too young to remember that. Of <laughs> okay, course. sure, but, yes. But, but of I, yes. I remember a little bit of that, <laughs> and it was, oh, Bechtel's a global multinational company, and you've built built big things. Uh, uh, you've got relationships with uh, global leaders. You're too much of an insider. Uh, he made it through Senate confirmation, and I'd have to say is probably uh, he he's, goes down as one of our more outstanding secretaries of state, George Schultz, in large part because he brought that business experience to the table. He knew how to negotiate. He knew how to run a very large bureaucracy called the, the Department of State. And I think Rex Tillerson is likely to bring the same kinds of skills and qualities. You bring up Senate confirmation. Do you think he's going to make it through Senate confirmation? It's, it's going to be a tough go. Uh, personally, I've been through three Senate confirmations confirmation. So I, I know how this process works. And so the, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee will first have at him after an investigation, a full FBI and a Senate investigation. And uh, listen, it will be divided. And they're going to look at his ties to Russia. They're going to look at uh, ExxonMobil as a corporation. Uh, they're going to look at some of the other areas in which they've been major investors and what the history has, has been like. So it, it's going to be a rough confirmation, but I think in the end he gets hmm. through. Let's talk for a moment, Governor, about uh, your experience with China and the one China policy. You know, President-elect Trump talked about how that could be a fluid thing and and we need to make a deal and stepping away from our our uh, really policy that the United States has had in in uh, agreeing that there was a one China policy with Taiwan. How important is that policy? Well, the the U.S.-China relationship has been built on a framework uh, over Uh, several presidents all the way back to 1972, Republicans and Democrats alike. And it came out of this sort of ambiguous uh, framework uh, with respect to how you handle Taiwan. That was always the outstanding issue. So it ended with uh, there will be one China and they both can claim to be China. Uh, And we live in this world of ambiguity. It's just the way that politics is sometimes done in other parts of the world. So shaking up that framework uh, is going to cause great consternation. Uh, not just to uh, those in China, but those in Taiwan, too, and frankly, the whole neighborhood, because the whole neighborhood runs on a certain rhythm based on stability and and predictability, and that goes right back to the framework. 
uh, of the U- of of the one China policy. So, uh, is there room for flexibility and change? Of course. In fact, the relationship runs on three communiques, basically one dealing with security, the other our, our bilateral relationship, and the other had to deal with Taiwan. The last communique was done in about 1982. So uh, if I were advising President-elect Trump, I I would say there is room for an updated U.S.-China communique. Uh, Call it the Trump communique, whatever you want. And we need to put into this communique an updated sense of our relationship with Taiwan, North Korea, the South China Sea, counterterrorism, peace and stability in East Asia, how we work together in the Middle East, for example, where China has uh, increased uh, stakes and interests. There's a whole lot more that has to be framed or enshrined in a, in a new understanding. And I think, listen, the way he's approaching this, the Chinese are totally out balance. And I suspect uh, they'll be interested in sitting down and talking about how you can get something like this done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can you hang out for a second, Governor? We want to uh, get get a quick check of uh, traffic and weather together at uh, 7.09. Let's do that right now. We'll come back and continue with uh, some questions for for the Governor. Uh, Let's go back right now with Triple Team Traffic, and here's Andy Farnsworth. Traffic still moving at or close to the speed limit on northbound I-15, heading up from Point of the Mountain to the south interchange and into downtown. You're not going to see anything slowing you yet on I-215 on either side of the valley, 215 west or east. Bangor Highway had some slowing through West Valley earlier. Now it seems back to uh, a little bit lighter traffic through the area. Eric? We are just getting a report now of an accident or a vehicle on fire, actually, northbound on the uh, 215 Westbelt. This is about uh, 2,500 north, so if you're in that area, be careful of that. Uh, stay away, obviously. No problems in Utah County right now. I-15 from Provo to the point in good shape. Michelle? We are looking at uh, good freeway speeds in Utah, or Weaver and Davis counties, I'm sorry. Uh, You're not going to really see any delays. Where you will see the delays is on the west and south gates leading into Hill Air Force Base. We're still looking at some pretty good backups. If you have 30 minutes, ARUP Blood Services needs all blood types to store up during the holidays. Learn how you can save a life. Visit utahblood.org. I'm Michelle Rowe in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL News Time now is 7-11. Let's get a quick look at the weather forecast. And back to you, Grant. Had a mix of sun and high clouds yesterday and uh, more of the same today. More mild temperatures. Again, we reach 43. Tomorrow, we're up to 46 with some rain showers coming afternoon tomorrow. I'm Grant Wayman, KSL Weather Center. And right now, downtown Salt Lake City, we've got a, a temperature of 29 degrees. We continue our conversation right now with former Utah Governor John Huntsman Jr. He's live here in studio. And remember, you can watch this interview right now with the KSL News Radio app. You just download it from iTunes or Google Play. Governor, I have to ask you about uh, your name not only being thrown into the mix for a Secretary of State with Donald Trump, but uh, also now being thrown into the mix as a possible contender to Orrin Hatch for the uh, Utah Senate seat here in 2018. How do you respond? respond to uh, that that uh, that possibility. Can I say, Brian, that there's way too much talk about politics? <laughs> can, we, can we just have a breather? I mean, if you could wave a magic wand, you'd say, these campaigns go on interminably. They go on yeah. so, so it's, darn It never long. ends, doesn't it? So if you could wave a magic wand, you'd say, come on, let's not talk politics until about six months out of the election. Uh, <laughs> let, let's get term limits for members of Congress, and let's fix uh, the gerrymandering, which has taken competition completely out of politics. I can't wave a magic wand, but uh, that, that's my answer to right. you know, the talk about politics. You know, the fact of the matter uh, there is... Uh, uh, senator Hatch, who's been who's been a good senator, uh, has a decision to make. Uh, he said that he may be considering another term. I don't know what the answer to that is because he said last time that this would be his last. And so probably there are a, a lot of folks who would be interested in in going in 2018. So I think you know, at least personally, you know, I I owe him the respect of coming to that conclusion on his own and deciding where he wants to go, and that will then impact what we do and probably what a whole lot of other people do with respect to. Uh, the Senate seat in 2018. Mm-hmm. You know so much about diplomacy with your expertise and experience as ambassador. If you were... It's called Amanda raising seven kids. Yes. So oh, yes. Seven There's kids. diplomacy well, there you right go. there. You're going to learn a little bit about diplomacy. <laughs> May I ask you You're going to stay then? married for 33 years. <laughs> yes. You're going to learn a little about diplomacy. How to get so, along with people. <laughs> based, on, based on that experience then, if you were advising President-elect Trump, would you advise him to get off Twitter? Oh, I, I, I think so. You you can't conduct uh, uh, national affairs or international affairs on Twitter. Uh, what you say is taken uh, uh, literally uh, in, 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 in every capital of the world. Uh, and listen, with the, res- with the presidency comes enormous responsibility. You're speaking for all 320 million people in the United States, and your words do matter. So uh, I think it's been a, a very useful tool during 
campaign. In fact, I think it's been a winning tool in terms of how he has captured the imagination of people and done it as a as sort of a, a, an in, a, an unpre- unpredictable independent. But now when you're speaking for the United States of America, you might want to rethink uh, your tools of communication. So what are you up to now? What are you, what are you focusing on right now? What are you doing? Well, right days? now, for example, yesterday we just had uh, uh, our, our board meeting of the Huntsman Cancer Institute, which is probably the most important thing that we'll ever do. I mean, you talk politics and all this nonsense compared to what goes on there, the work, the heroism, the suffering, the the folks who uh, lay it all out there on the line after they're diagnosed with a disease that is far too common, and they lose all hope. And this is a place where hope is restored and where great men and women who are researchers and doctors uh, are at the cutting edge of medicine and science, and it's just a very special place. So that's what we're mostly interested in and where I and my brother Peter and others and Mm -hmm. my dad, uh, bless his heart, uh, we'll be involved for a long time. Forgive uh, me. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. And and, be, and beyond that, uh, I'm involved uh, with some with some businesses uh, as a, as a corporate uh, director. Some great American companies, Ford Motor Company, which I which I oh, love nice. in Detroit. Cool. And uh, Caterpillar, which uh, makes great big yellow tractors and <laughs> yeah. is one of the great manufacturing success stories in America. You hear a lot about what's going wrong with manufacturing, but you look at Ford Motor Company and Caterpillar and you say, Wow, we can do it better than anybody else <laughs> in, in the world. Um, and and, uh, and a company uh, called Hilton Hotels, which is another great American company uh, where I spend a lot of time. Awesome. I know you have to go, Governor Huntsman, but you, do you have experience in China? Did you talk about cyber uh, attacks? Did you talk about that kind of a cyber espionage when you were ambassador over there? Because we have a problem now, not just with China, but with Russia. What, what is your commentary on that? Well, listen, we have a huge problem, and you have to differentiate it between espionage, uh, which is what countries do. They spy on each other, uh, and we do it too pretty well. Uh, and the commercial espionage, which is the outright theft of intellectual property. So if you look at what the Russians do, uh, the Chinese do, uh, what the Iranians do, uh, is their target sets are well beyond national security target sets. They go into civil society, private citizens, uh, corporations, and they rip off whatever they want. And my big complaint is countries are going to watch each other on the espionage side. And it's really hard to draw red lines around what you can and cannot do. But we, we certainly ought to be able to draw red lines around private sector, civil society, and companies. We lose, because I co-chaired a, com- a national commission a couple of years ago on intellectual property theft, uh, and we lose $300 billion per year in innovation, in ideas, in job creation. I'd say Chinese are 70% of the problem. The Russians, uh, are they have better technology, but the Chinese are more persistent. They have more people doing it. Uh, so if I were, again, if I were President-elect Trump looking at China and all the trade issues that we've got, I, I would bore in on this one issue because it is huge, and there are some tools that we have readily available mm. to stop it. Uh, they'd be controversial, and they would hurt in terms of our trade, but uh, this has to be addressed because it's happening all the time, and it really is impacting some of our great companies in America. Mm. Well, Governor, we can't thank you enough for coming in today and uh, spending some time with us. We really great appreciate pleasure. your time. What this a is a, a whole lot of fun for so us. good to see you. Yeah, we'll do it really again great. sometime. Thank Please you, do. Governor. Yeah, you betcha. KSL News so Time now is 717.